news. You no longer need to feel guilty about staying in bed all day, scrolling on your phone for hours. Better yet, forget about the shower, work, or eating something healthy. Turns out, rotting in bed all day is cool now. In fact, the trend has 1 billion views on TikTok. Hot girl summer? That's so last decade. This is rock girl summer or eternity. Rot away, my darlings, like a spent Victorian rose garden. The old days of toxic productivity, toxic glow-ups, toxic wellness is gone. Me waking up at 5 a.m. I only got four hours of sleep last night and I desperately wanted to stay in bed when my alarm went off, but I got up anyways. Behold, rotting era is all the rage. In an era of optimization, TikTokers are saying no thank you to hyper productivity and introducing rock girl summer. Replace the green juice with the donut shakes, the self-help books with Netflix on the 23rd hour nonstop, the berries classes with the bed, the overexposure to UV to not knowing if it's 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. Tuesday or Thursday. Now before we get deep into talking about the rotting era and the flea bag era, I want to really emphasize that this video is not to criticize anyone going through a time of hardship and just needing some time to rest or simply someone falling into a rut. For we are all human and I had my own fair share of rotting era, which I will share in a second. But like everything, the rot era trend is not as black and white as it seems. There are, believe it or not, benefits and harms to this becoming trendy. So let us talk about what is bed rotting and flea bag era, the fine line between self care and just being lazy, the overflowing toxic positivity and delusions on TikTok, Woo! Great job! and how to get out of a rut if that is what you strive for. WDF is rot era. Yes, oh my god, rot girl summer. Rot away, my darlings, like a spent Victorian rose garden. Melt into your chaise lounge or your Ikea couch. Do not let a garment with a zipper on it touch your skin. Snack on whatever you can find from the back of the pantry. Drink that white cloth that's been there since last summer. I don't give a shit. Rot girl summer. Couldn't agree more. I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm so passionate about it and it's what I do. Bed rotting is a term popularized on TikTok referring to when you spend much or even all of your day in bed by choice. Keywords here are by choice. This is not speaking to you if you tore your ACL, had surgery, and need to spend time in bed to rest. It is you deliberately choosing to spend your day in bed. And there are several potential reasons that lead to a bed rot. When someone feels overly stressed and anxious, overwhelmed with emotions, and they just need to spend a lengthy period of time in bed to rest or cope. When someone is using lying in bed as an escapism. When someone doesn't feel very motivated to get out of bed. This is very aligned with the flea bag era. People in a flea bag era embrace the chaos of their lives and tend to self-sabotage. It romanticizes the life of an anti-heroine. Quote, to be a woman born with pain built in. Both the raw era and the flea bag era are almost rebellions toward another side of the culture. The side where you should wake up at 5 a.m. to get your hot girl workout in, journal every day, strive to be your best self, and find every possible way to glow up. In my view, it's not a or B. It's a spectrum. And no one needs to stick with just one side. Like the ups and downs we go through in life, it's actually very reasonable to go between a glow up era and a rotting era. So I had two raw eras, one of which is shorter and helped me gain the benefits of taking a break and resting. And the other one was much longer and more damaging. So I think it would be really helpful if we dissect the pros and cons of the rotting era. But before that, I have just gone out of a rotting era of feeling unmotivated, overstressed, and not taking proper care of my health. But inspired by Women's Month, I'm stepping up my skincare game and making sure that my skin gets the love it deserves. With a spa type experience at home for all skin 
emergencies. Amiros, R3 Turbo limited edition gift is legit a secret to getting back into my A game. As featured in Harper's Bazaar, L Vogue, Marie Claire, the device uses patented flat RF heads that help reduce puffy eyes and tighten your skin with a silky touch that fits your skin perfectly. It feels really nice. It's like tiny warm massages on your skin. I'm on level three, but it's really gentle. So even after a night of work, studying, the bloating and eye bags, face, jaw, will be reduced like magic. Wow! They're giving us a $50 discount using code ZOE at the link below. Check it out to unlock the secret to a new glow. And let's get back to the pros and cons of a rotting era. Self-care versus self-abandonment. Let's talk about the pros first. Number one, emotional coping. One of my raw eras was related to a heartbreak. Aww. For anyone who has experienced any hurt in any form of relationship, whether that's friendship, family, romantic, that shit hurts, okay? And your brain capacity just goes which is why I not only take breaks from dating to spare my mental health during a heartbreak, but also a break from work because I know the quality of work I create won't be the best. Like I am physically incapable of filming or attending a meeting on camera and just want my head to shut down. Obviously that is not possible. So the next best thing to do is to do nothing to minimize the damages for a reasonable time number two avoiding burnouts this is shown in the overall pro raw era sentiment where people are just tired of the same old repeat of toxic productivity toxic productivity in contrast with regular productivity is an obsessive need to always be productive regardless of the cost to your health relationships and life again this is another spectrum and it really depends on what is right for you, but beating yourself daily to be productive could actually be counterproductive. This is especially true if you're in the art or creativity business because the more you force to push out something, the less creative and inspired you will feel. And let's not forget burnouts. Does it ever happen to you where you feel so burnt out that all you do is lie in bed in your free time, but then you feel hella guilty for not doing anything productive and then it just sends you into a spiral feeling shitty about yourself even though you already felt shitty about yourself? Or is that just me? Working to work or working to exhaust yourself to the point that you no longer want to do that thing again is not sustainable. Number three, inclusivity. This trend shows the humanness in all of us. For everyone has their off days, okay? It's not a crime. Quote, it's not like the whole that girl concept where you have to be skinny, white, and pretty. Anyone can just decide to drop into a new era. If viewed in a healthy mindset, the trend is inclusive and makes everyone feel less ashamed of not always looking or feeling 100% aesthetic. But like, Everything in pop culture trends these days, there is a dangerous zone where it pushes past normalization to glamorization. So let's also talk about the harms. Number one, the anti-productivity hack. Excessive rest is a form of procrastination. Covering yourself in blankets, bed sheets, and Nutella could be a form of escapism. Unless if that actually solves any pressing problems you're stressed out about. Number two, affect your health in a negative way. Here's all the reasons that you should not participate in the new TikTok trend called bed rotting as told by a medical professional. In short, it causes serious health consequences, including death. It doesn't solve anything. It just removes you from a situation and prolongs having to deal with it. This could be both physical and emotional. So starting with the physical, you could throw off your sleep patterns because you no longer associate your bed exclusively with sleep or feeling sleepy. Being in bed all day is also terrible for your posture, your spinal cord, speaking from experience and can lead to poor blood flow and for the emotional health chances are if you're in bed all day you are not socializing with anybody face to face and that could be good at the right times but prolonged isolation also harms your existing relationships If you're just looking to rest and cope with the stress in life, there are also other alternatives to bed rotting. And that brings up the story of my other rot era 
in high school. I just didn't find school interesting at all and would rather be half lying in bed all day binge watching shows, drama, any form of entertainment that could take my mind off the reality that I was a teen with many aspirations and was doing nothing to get to them. That took a toll on my physical health. I literally would get so dizzy, so lightheaded when I actually do get out of bed. And it wasn't feeding me emotionally either because I was feeling very lost and purposeless, which brings me to my third point, damage to self-image. Eventually, the rotting becomes a true era. The repetition will reinforce this type of energy and the lack of motivation into your identity. And that is scary. <laughs> When it's no longer by choice, but you feel trapped in this identity of someone who can't get things done, is not properly taking care of themselves, and is not looking or feeling their best, it really lowers your self-worth. I mean, doing the bed rotting thing here and there should be okay, as long as it's not introducing more problems into your life. However, if you end up losing your job, your relationships, your friendship, your health, your savings, that's a problem. And the toxic positivity and delusional glamorization of rotting is trending upward. Live fast. Die young. Be wild. And have fun. You're my little sparkle jump rope queen. You're my little sparkle. You're my little sparkle jump rope. I get that this uprising trend is almost like the anti-aesthetic aesthetic because yes, glow up trends have gotten out of hands at times where people focus too much on the external validations over working on internal healing. And yes, aesthetics to some extent are always related to consumerism in one way or another, but is going all the way to the other side of the extreme really a solution? First, for those actually struggling with mental health, yes, take Taking a break is essential, but it shouldn't be taken by the internet that having a bed raw day is the solution to coping with hardships. It overlooks the importance of seeking professional assistance and like I said, might isolate the individual even more. Calling bed rotting self-care is also a little controversial in my opinion because on one hand, it could really be the care you actually need. But on the other hand, it could be abused as an excuse to glamorize being lazy or procrastinating as simply a self-care day. Like where does the line actually draw between self-care and self-abandonment? Of not showering, not responding to anyone, not showing up at work not eating enough essential nutrients. Over labeling things as self care is, in my view, part of the toxic positivity we see online these days. Where it's no longer okay to suggest someone to improve their appearance, even if that will help them with their self image, because that's just ugly shaming. It's no longer okay to tell an obese person to lose weight, because that's fat shaming. It's no longer okay to try to motivate someone to work, because that's toxic productivity. Acceptance is one thing, but being delusionally positive positive about that very thing could cause more harms and damages down the future and is actually irresponsible to the person who is struggling. For example, your friend is skipping out on all classes while rotting in bed all day on TikTok and Netflix and you know if they continue with this, they will fail the semester and potentially get expelled. The easy thing to do is to force some kind of positivity and tell them that it is okay, everything's going to be okay, they're just taking a self-care moment. That they should accept themselves and their life as is and doing whatever they're doing, this self-care will not derail them from their education or career down the future. So I need to tell you something. Okay. It's bad. Okay. Like really bad. Okay. I stole my boyfriend's phone and I messaged his ex to see how she would react. Okay. And I'm still talking to her as him. It's been two weeks. It's fine. And the hard thing is to actually be more honest. It does not mean it needs to be delivered in a mean way. Just be open and objective about the situation instead of being delusional together. Is it good to be positive though? 
A hundred percent. But is it healthy to stay positive and lie to yourself that everything is fine when you know that three more months of rotting era could get you into the hospital? I don't think so. Number one is that it can kill you, and I'm not even joking. If you stay in bed all day for a long period of time, you can get blood clots in your lungs and legs, especially if you have a history of blood clots. DVT, diabetes, etc. Being delusional, speaking from experience, is the easy way out. But no one can stay delusional forever without any damages to their well-being and self-image. And to this day, I have not met one single successful person, success in terms of finances, career, relationships, who will say that their success and growth come from comfort. So for those wanting to grow, how to get out of a rut? Are you even paying attention to me right now? I feel like this could be a video on its own for there are so many potential directions to go about this, but I just want to share some quick tips on how I tackle a rotting era. Quick note, this is for the generic case. If you're struggling with depression or other serious illnesses, please seek professional help immediately. First, reflect on why you're in this phase. There's only one cause for being stuck in a rut. Humans are wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. It fulfills one of the most powerful of our six human needs, certainty. And then you need to be honest with yourself. What pain are you trying to avoid? Some of the most common fears include fear of uncertainty, fear of rejection, fear of poverty, fear of death, and fear of loss of love. Figure out what is pulling you away from action. Second, stop making excuses. Identify the belief that are limiting you and start taking ownerships. We are always so mean to ourselves and keep on telling these negative things that are untrue about us. For me, it was like telling myself that I am not a good content creator because I don't have a background in that and that I am not talented enough. So that voice has been going on in my head for the longest time, but had I listened to it, I would not be able to begin my career as a creator. No matter how unfairly you think you've been treated, the only person ultimately responsible for the happiness in your life is you. Take some time for that to sink in. Third, take on a new challenge. It does not mean running a 10K the day after you got out of your 30-day rut. Start with something small and new, but out of your comfort zone. It could be saying hi to a new stranger at the coffee shop every day. It could be doing a five-minute daily stretch. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex of your brain is responsible for applying past experiences to current decisions. You bring solves problems using neural pathways that have previously worked. So creating new pathways could help your brain learn how to get out of a rut. And that is all I have for today. Thank you for hanging out. Comment below your thoughts on the rock girl era trend. If you're new to the channel, I make a lot of commentaries and growth videos, so check them out and I will see you next week.